Here she is, boys. Here she is, world. Green eyeshadow. We're, we're doing it today. Why not? Anyway, let's get started. Hello, friends. Um, my name is Miranda, and welcome back to this mess. Um, today, we're doing my March wrap up. So, I'm going to be taking you through all of the books that I read in March 2021 um, and one DNF and one book that I have not finished yet but I have been reading a lot of during March. Most of these books I um, read or mentioned in my um, reading according to my zodiac sign Pisces reading vlog um, so I will link that in the description if you haven't seen it because it's rather good it's rather good and I like it. So I'm going to start off with the book that I DNF'd first um, because it was the first bookish activity that I did um, in March, um, as in I DNF'd this on the 1st of March, um, and that is Wild Swims by Dwarf Nors. Um, I tried to read this for my Pisces reading vlog um, because the ebook was on Scribd and I thought that sounds cool, I'll give it a go. It's described as a series of short stories um, about um, people in crisis and a kind of like psychological portrait of them which sounds like my kind of thing um but it just wasn't um the writing style was not for me I found that you just sort of got chucked in without any context whatsoever um which is normally fine but like it would be mentioning people that you hadn't come across before and like acting as if you knew them and then also they were all really short um I read the first four and by the time I'd finished them um I was like you know just figuring out kind of what was happening and then it was like no more um which really annoyed me I just wasn't into it so I stopped then something a bit different I read um English Gentleman Merchant at Work which is really hard to say um by Soren Mentz another Danish author by coincidence this is bad. I didn't like it at all. The reason I read this was because I had to do a book review for um, one of my history modules on the East India Company, kind of the early history of the East India Company. To be fair, I have mostly myself to blame for this book not being a fun time because um, I chose it specifically because I thought that I would be able to rip into it um, because the author basically wanted to um, reinstate the Eurocentric approach to looking at East India Company history um, instead of acknowledging um, the kind of rich complex context of Asia that they were kind of trying to fit themselves into. Anyway I did rip into it. Um, I went full out in my review because it has some really problematic parts about Asian women um, and all kinds of other stuff. And I wasn't into it so I was like Soren my boy you're getting roasted um, in a really academic um, intelligent balanced way which is my favorite way to roast the shit out of people also it was so boring and so dry like if you're gonna write a slightly racist book at least have some panache you know some pizzazz like don't just be the driest shit I've ever read in my life. So yeah, that was a no from me. And yeah, I wouldn't recommend that for anybody, even history students, even other historians. It's no. Then I read Frankenstein by Jeanette Winterson. This was the first book that I finished for my Pisces reading vlog. Um, and again, it's kind of a bit complicated. Um, I talked about it a lot in a lot of depth in my vlog so I'm I'm not going to go over it all here because I did really kind of flesh out my thoughts there but basically this is um a story with two main strands one of them being um Mary Shelley coming up with the idea and writing Frank Frankenstein and another one being um a modern day doctor scientist trying to figure out um the secret to like keeping people alive basically and whether that kind of comes with robots or whatever um yeah I really enjoyed the Mary Shea parts the modern parts have a main character who is trans and is not a good representation of trans people because they have no character other than they've had surgery so that wasn't 
great. Then a much better book um, is How We Fight For Our Lives by Saeed Jones. Um, I listened to this on audio um, using Scribd again. I love your script. I really enjoyed it. It was a great audiobook. It's narrated by Saeed Jones. Um, and what is it? What actually is this book? So this is his memoir, mostly about kind of growing up um, in the US as a um, black, queer, kind of working class um, boy with a single mother. Um, and it's kind of mostly about his experience growing up and being queer. Um, but also a lot of it is about his relationship with his mother and his grandmother. The writing is really simple but incredibly kind of piercing. Um, let's go with that. Um, and I really loved how it goes into lots of different episodes in his family life um, and kind of links them all together um, and makes sort of different observations about his family relationships and his life. Unfortunately I listened to this over quite a long period of time which I think did it a disservice because it wasn't as much of an impact when you leave it for like a week and then go back to it but that was definitely a me problem not a book problem um i really enjoyed it it's brilliant um and i would highly recommend it then i read earthlings by siaka marata um this it was another pisces recommended book um and it was a wild time this is about um a character called natsuki it starts off when she's um a kind of young girl um and she doesn't fit in with her family and she suffers some really awful trauma um but she kind of finds refuge in her cousin Yu who is the only person who she feels like understands her um because they both believe that they are aliens um and they can't help but see human society um from a kind of outsider's perspective it then skips forward to her adult life and kind of looks at how her past trauma is manifesting itself um, in her relationships and this is incredibly dark um, like I, I, I say that a lot because the books that I read are quite dark but this is dark um, and it will haunt me for a long time um, but I think it's done really well. I found it really compelling and emotional um, and especially impressive with the perspective of Natsuki because you get right into her head um, especially when she's a child um, and that makes everything really powerful. Please go check out Content Warnings before you read this um, especially if you're not comfortable reading about um, sexual assault, um, extreme violence and emotional abuse. Um, yeah because it goes quite hard. Um, all behind this cute little cover. Lies. <laughs> Then I read um, In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. I don't know where my copy is right now because my flatmate's reading it um, because I pushed it onto him because I was like, you'll like it. Um, yeah, this is another memoir. I'm into them right now. Um, and I really loved it. Um, I gave this five stars because no complaints. <laughs> um, I literally can't fault this book. I think it's excellent and I loved every minute of reading it. Again, I talked about this a lot in my vlog, but basically this is about um, Carmen Maria Machado's time in an abusive relationship with another woman um, but she goes through the relationship in different ways kind of reading it as different things almost like she's she's putting it in different boxes and seeing which one fits trying to make sense of the experience um, yeah it's great read it just do it then I read My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell um, this was another audiobook um, and another five star read um, and another incredibly dark book about abuse um, I don't know how I managed to read three of them in one go it just happened this is a novel about a girl called Vanessa um, who is groomed by her teacher when she's 15 um, and they start this relationship and it's split between um, when she's 15 and this kind of relationship is developing and then in 2017 when she's in her 30s and another girl um, accuses this teacher of abuse and Vanessa is asked to come forward um, as it would kind of help add weight to the case um, but she doesn't want to as she still sees her um, the relationship that they had as love um, and doesn't think that she was abused um, because it's kind of like their relationship doesn't end when she leaves the school like it carries on and they sort of 
it almost like comes to define her life. Like Earthlings, what I found really impressive about this was the perspective of Vanessa, um, maybe helped by the fact that I listened to it on audiobook, but how you manage to get into like the deep workings of her brain um, and you kind of see the manipulation, manipulation as it's like working on her is incredibly haunting and like excellently written. Vanessa's trauma is depicted really complexly so she is able to kind of flip between um, awareness of what happened and kind of the fact that she was abused um, and then denying it and justifying it um, sometimes like within the same sentence um, and I think that's really impressive that Russell managed to depict that because that's the sort of like mental gymnastics that trauma gives you um, and it's incredibly difficult to write and incredibly difficult to depict because it's not at all rational um, but because you're so in Vanessa's head and she feels like such a fully rounded character it it makes perfect sense whenever I wasn't listening to this I was thinking about it um, and I know that it will stick with me for a long time um, not just because of like the subject matter um, although that obviously that is like haunting but also because of how complexly and beautifully it is written um, and I think it's a real like achievement of a book then finally I finished Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson. Um, I read this last night um, on March 31st and yeah so I was looking for something a little bit less heavy. I mean this is still like sad but it's not it's not like dense, it's very sparse um, and yeah but I still kind of struggle to motivate myself to pick it up um, and then I had a little reading marathon <laughs> last night um, so I could include it in this video. And when I did that, I did end up really enjoying it. So this is the story of a family um, in New York, primarily centering around um, Iris, who is 15 when she finds out that she's pregnant um, and she decides to keep the baby. Um, why did I say it so weirdly? Keep the baby. The ba -ba 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 baby. Then you go kind of outwards from her and um, look at all the different members of her family. So you look at her daughter, Melody, um, and her parents. Um, and Melody's parents, like Melody's father. There are so many beautiful perspectives in this. Um, I think my favourites were Aubrey, who is Melody's dad, um, and then her grandfather as well, um, because they were just full of like absolute love and joy, um, and it was just wonderful to read. Some of the perspectives were done in first person, and some of them were done in third person, which felt like a weird choice to me, um, but also a couple of them felt a lot more developed than the others um, but overall it was a really kind of interesting complex look at family relationships and motherhood and I mean parenting in general and kind of what happens if you end up having a baby but not having like the strongest of connections. I wanted a bit more from it but generally it was enjoyable and I would really recommend it. Donk! So that's all the books that I finished reading in March, um, but most of my reading in March was probably with this bad boy, um, The Brothers Karamazov by Dostoevsky, um, because I'm reading this for my Russian novel module at the moment, um, and it's long, it's so long, but look, I'm like, I'm not that far off the end now, um, which is incredibly exciting. Yeah, so this is taking up a lot of my time, um, but I have found an audiobook now which is making everything a lot easier. So this is partly why I haven't finished like loads of books this month, um, but also just been a bit sad in it, you know, um, and struggling to motivate myself. But we move. I'm still here. So that was March. Um, thank you very much for watching this. Um, I hope you enjoyed and please go pick up some of these books, the ones that I liked obviously, not the bad ones. Yeah, thank you so much for watching um, and I will see you soon.